Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and, and rock and roll for the, the time being. And again, this is recorded. This is um, another awesome Snowflake meetup brought to you guys from the Carolina Snowflake meetup team, um, you know, part of uh, ASEG Data Lake House. But uh, we've got me, uh, your host, <laughs> Christian Screen, and then we've got your co-host here, uh, Heather Pearson. Hello. And, uh, so we're just going to talk today again uh, in lieu of having a, a brewery or a bar or restaurant to go to. Uh, we have virtual Zoom meetings and, and meet up to, to convey some information and meet up with some other folks interested in Snowflake and so forth. And then we always have you know time at the end for some Q&A and some open discussion, talk about whatever crosses your mind. And then somewhere in between, if there's any questions, just kind of raise your hand, um, put, the, put the questions in chat. And then we'll, we'll once we see those, we'll, we'll definitely call you out to talk about uh, whatever it is you want to talk about uh, related to the subject, hopefully. And we always have these nice just rules and guidelines, just try to have everyone be respectful of everybody else. I think that's what it boils down to. Uh, you know, totally optional to turn your own video on. I'll keep mine on. And then please, please recommend us or invite a friend. We're always trying to come up with some cool new topics, apply it to real world scenarios. And then at the end of the day, we're just trying to have some fun and, and share our knowledge with, with everybody else. And, and, uh, and if you guys, you know, anybody wants to participate in our Carolina meetup, uh, definitely let us know. And, um, you know, if the stars align, we'll find a way to roll and we'll rope you into be part of a presentation or one of the meetups and then of course we're on social media so ping us on twitter find us on linkedin ascg data like house so for today we just have a really quick agenda pretty straightforward actually talking about stages external uh, versus internal do a walkthrough highlight a business case kind of sort of talk about internal external basics and then uh, We'll talk about this, the snow uh, CLI. I actually have it on my machine and we could do like a super quick demo of it, but it's not a major part of what, we, what we're covering today. And then really just anything else in stages and you know, talk about some of our upcoming events. So maybe Heather will give us a, a list of the next few that we're gonna talk about. Real quick refresher on Snowflake, even though everybody at this point, if, at least if you're on this, this meetup, you kind of know what Snowflake is. So it is the, the new data cloud, uh, at least that's a, a term they've coined. And it's really all about taking your data all the way from ingest to or ingress to, to egress. There's governance tied into the tool. There's pretty much access from all sort of the more popular open standard access points. And there's near infinite scale. So um, when it comes to Using managing your data in the cloud, it is a great tool. We like it. It's a good train. Get on it. Then it solves a lot of problems. We work with a lot of different clients. We use Snowflake ourselves. Um, as a matter of fact, I spent a lot of this weekend in the Snowflake environment uh, doing some stuff with, with Java and, and Python and some other cool stuff. And uh, ultimately, it's kind of soup to nuts, right? You've got sources. You've got to transform it. You've got to, you need to get to a point where you're doing some data science. You're normalizing, aggregating the data. And you need to get that into the hands of people who will then take that as information and do something with it. And so we call those data consumers. And really, Snowflake provides all that capability that you see here on the screen, um, really, especially in the middle part. And then it facilitates everything else on either end. So a, a great tool. Uh, again, we're big fans of it. And we're also big fans of this idea that I think originated with at least how Snowflake is using it, which is called stages. Now, let me, I'll take a step back. Snowflake did not originate the idea of stage or having a stage as it relates to data or ELT, but they definitely took it to another level, which we hadn't seen really, at least um, in many other software products or cloud-based products. But what is a stage, right? It's really a, a step or process in uh, development. We've used it for the concept, at least for almost two decades and two decades, right? With data warehousing and some other like operational data store concepts. Well, maybe not operational data store so much, but definitely data warehousing. 
where you have one or more source systems like a customer relationship management or an ERP system, that's your source system or source systems. You need to get that data into a target system like a data warehouse uh, or an enterprise data warehouse, a customer data warehouse, financial data warehouse. And you want to do a bunch of cleansing transformation. You want to combine you know, a CRM system with an ERP, ERP system, something like that. So typically what we do is that we'd have like a waypoint or like a stage in area where we load X amount of those data um, systems or sources into a stage. We might do some cleansing, some transformations. We might bring in some uh, data from the target, bring that into stage, and then we take that amalgamated set of data and we push it back into the target or other places, right? That's kind of standard. And that's been happening for, for easily two decades at this point. So what does that have to do with Snowflake? Well, I think it's a very similar concept, but what's different is it's all kind of, this idea of their stage is kind of co-located. And because they're using the cloud, they're using like object storage as their kind of staging system. And, uh, and then they run the compute on top of that. And because they kind of centralize it in the cloud-based storage, uh, at least their stage, there's so many things you can you can do with it, uh, much more than what we used to do with a simple database running on a in a data center or a colo or under somebody's desk, right? And uh, so just think of it as a physical virtual place that's to hold the data, and um, and yeah, and then you'll be right. And one one caveat to stage is the way Snowflake does it. In case you guys didn't know this, was there's actually like a user stage. There's a stage per table in Snowflake. And then they have the internal stage, which we'll talk about in the external stage. Uh, but for the most part, most people, I think, only know that there's an internal and external stage. But again, if you think about it, how do you think Snowflake manages the separation of compute and storage in the cloud? And so that's really the concept, right? Um, probably very high level if we, if we spoke with the actual hands-on keyboard developers at Snowflake, they, they'd probably give us an earful on that one. But at a high level, that's the general concept, right? And so just the, the talk around the campfire is that people are using stages. I mean, not only because you're a user and you use tables and those already have like behind the scenes stages, but the fact that you have all this extensibility in Snowflake, you've got Snow SQL, you've got the copy into command, You've got uh, now the REST API uh, command with one of the latest releases. Uh, people are developing applications where they're using um, stages to, as a, again, a kind of like a way station to kind of move data, do some ELT um, type of work. Uh, we've got Snowflake pipes and um, we like it because it can be secure, right? Like at some point you can manage your own keys. You can use Snowflake keys. And the last point I'll make on this is just moving data quickly. Right, somebody gives you a, a million record uh, CSV file uh, from Google Analytics, and you're you're not a, a hardcore data scientist. You don't have an ELT tool, but you can write a little bit of SQL. You know, you can do a lot with that CSV file using stages, and we'll kind of allude to some of that in our in our discussion here. One other thing that we like to say, right? We respect the authority of, of setting up this the system. And I think this has to do with just understanding the privileges. Uh, we talked with a customer a while back, or a client of ours a while back, who was actually a client now. And when they didn't really grasp the idea of, of stages. And as a matter of fact, they tried to set up their Snowflake environment by themselves. And uh, they were trying to set up like a snow pipe and some other stuff. And they bumped into this issue where they couldn't really understand the privileges and the granting and, and things like that. And so they basically gave up on, on stages. And then we came in and we helped them out. And, set them up with a great solution. But my point is that uh, there are certain roles that work with stages that for granting and creating stages. And one of them is when you create something called a storage integration, you really have to be an account admin. Um, we have here or system admin, but I think it's actually just the account admin role. So basically like a God level role for your account, right? And then if you want access to any of those things, then you also have to be given per permissions because remember Snowflake is kind of like a lease permission system at any point in time. So pretty much anything you want to do, if you're not the owner of an object, you have to get a, you have to get granted some form of access and it's really granular access for the most part. <clears throat> so that's why a good security strategy is good in Snowflake. So 
when we think about um, what else you need, if you're using an external stage, then you might also need access or the authority to Azure or Google Cloud or AWS, whatever you might use to get access to like an object or a folder over there. But we're going to cover some of that in, in this chat. And the other key thing which we find is interesting about stages is kind of like popularity. It, it is kind of like a popularity contest because you know when you when you look at how Snowflake was releasing their uh, some of their features, AWS was like the first one because I think they they first loaded their platform on AWS, and then I think it was Azure and then GCP. Don't quote me on that, but they're on all three now, which is awesome. And will we see Alibaba or IBM um, later? I don't know, but. I'll be interested to see what, what becomes of the other ones. If Snowflakes um, becomes um, gets leveraged on that platform. But by the numbers, I mean, we can see AWS is, is kind of out there. Azure is a, uh, it's a trailing second. Then, you know, Google's, you know, an up and coming system. <laughs> they're, they're only like a 30 year overnight success. But as far as, you know, Google Cloud, People adopting it, I think it's a little, a little further behind, and and maybe that's why when we, what we're going over tonight, we're going to focus on Google Cloud. We're going to give them uh, the baton and um, give give Azure and, and Snowflake the stink eye on getting the setup, at least for tonight's meetup. Uh, focus on GCP, but the things you'll see here for GCP, they apply to the other two. We're just we we just landed on GCP. All right, so. We're going to cover a couple things. Hopefully, this this aligns with what folks want to see, and we're going to obviously Snowflake. I mentioned GCP. So what are we going to do? Right. So we're going to create an internal stage, and then we're going to create an external stage, and then we're going to move around some data. We're going to try to use as much SQL as possible, uh, but I will highlight something in the user interface. And then, so basically, this means right. We create stage. Create. We're going to go to GCP. We're going to create a bucket. We do some copy into commands, and then we're just gonna make sure everything's working, and we'll then we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna jump out of slides. A lot of this is gonna be real world, uh, real time demo, and so hopefully everything works. I did run through everything before the session, so um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if I uh, actually copied everything down correctly. Um, but I mean, we've implemented this enough times that it should all work correctly. So the, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit an internal storage. We're gonna create an internal storage. And so the key takeaway here is that an internal storage is managed by Snowflake. It's actually really interesting. Like when you think about what Snowflake did with this concept of state, really the whole platform, but this concept of stages is they, they basically, they're, they're, like a, they're like a buddy of yours who's like, you know, asking for permission to see your data. And then they've got this, you know, this awesome, um, this, this awesome house where they throw parties with your data, right? Um, and so if you think about it that way, like it kind of simplifies, you know, may, maybe some of the complexity here. So basically when you create a, an internal stage, which is managed by, by Snowflake, um, it's, it's a quick way to kind of get your data in and out like we talked about. Um, and, and it's secure if you, if you take this approach. But I think my point here was going to be that uh, what we'll see in a minute is... It's a little different from an external stage uh, in that because Snowflake manages it, it doesn't give you all the capability of the cloud that you might be looking for. And so one of the things to call out here is that we typically go straight for a external stage. And the reason for that is because typically a lot of the Snowflake customers, they're already using some other cloud-based platform, AWS, um, Google Cloud. And so we would use the internal stage as um, as a stopgap, right? Like we quickly need to do like a proof of concept. We're going to probably do something in internal stage, but even then we're probably pushing for an external stage. And so you can create an internal stage um, simply by using SQL or you can use the UI. And so we're going to look at both those in a minute. Before I get to that demo, that walkthrough, just kind of talk about some comments that like we, we okay now that we know what a stage is why why would we even use it plus first so i mentioned kind of like a poc if you think about poc like one of the first things you think about snowflake is let me get my data into snowflake 
And then once you get your data in, so you don't feel trapped, right? You're like, you might say, well, let me get my data out because that kind of makes sense. And so the ingress and the egress um, yin and yang concept applies here. Also, so the first thing we would do is, well, maybe the first thing, but one of the options is a put. And so you can put data into a stage and then you can do something with that because now you're basically connected to Snowflake. What's an example of that? Again, let's say I had created some financial spreadsheet on my local machine, and then I wanted to get that into Snowflake so my data scientist could, could use it. So I've got a couple of different options there, but if I use like the Snowflake uh, or the Snow SQL command line interface, I can run a command with the put if I know my stage, and I can load that data from my file system into a stage. And then somebody can take the next step and and copy the data from that stage into a table. And now it's in a table format. So anybody who has any form of SQL skill whatsoever, they can go bananas with that data, right? And so all that time, I, you know, I didn't have to write Java code. I didn't have to know Python. Uh, I didn't have to have an EL, ELT or ETL tool. I just with a few lines of code, I could get my spreadsheet in there, no problem. Then the other one is copy into. I kind of gave you an example of, of copy into as well. So you can move you, from a copy into, you can move a table that's already in Snowflake into a stage and thus into like Amazon Web Services S3, uh, GCP storage, or you could go from table to table. There's some other things you can do there, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but typically, it's, you're going to go from a stage to a file system or a table to a stage with copy into. Right? And a key note there is just that because it's a process, uh, there's an operation to be performed that, that is data intense or intensive. It is going to cost you a warehouse processing operation, right? And as you guys know, because we're separating compute from storage, a warehouse compute operation, there's typically a cost associated with that. Uh, it's not just a metadata call. And um, so just keep that in mind. And you can kind of see here from the diagram how things are moving to and fro. You know, if you look down at the bottom, the line delineates that local file system. So imagine that is either uh, your, your external stage, like over GCP or S3, or it's your actual local machine or a virtual machine or something like that. Okay, so it's all about moving data around. All right. And then the last part for demo, demos is just external stage. We'll, we'll show this. But... But the general idea, again, is those three vendors are the ones that are set up in Snowflake today. That will probably change in the future. We'll see. And um, like I said, for, for POCs, as we're getting towards like an actual final solution, like if we know it's, it's a, there's a bigger plan, and especially if the, the organization already has a little bit of architecture on those three vendors, we're probably going to push for that just to, so we don't have to do a bunch of double work, right? Um, all right. So let's actually jump into uh, an example slash exercise slash um, setting up the stage. Okay, so, and again, we share the video after the, the meetup, um, I'll give us a couple of days. And then we also share this code, any code that we go through, we put it out on our GitHub. So we'll, we'll share the links to that as well. Um, before I get rolling, I don't know if there, anybody had any questions out there coming from the, the chats, but we can definitely address those if they come up. And if there's none, then I'll just rock and roll. Does anybody want to say who their go-to cloud vendor is and why? <laughs> I've got a couple of folks on the phone. AWS. AWS. You got one, one for AWS. Any, anybody else? No takers. Okay. Well, the the odds the odds would have it that, that AWS, but um, like I said, uh, you know the the other platforms work as well, and um, and and they work well. Also, I'm kind of a big fan of GCP these days myself, but I've been using AWS for was it 12, 13 years now. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, yeah, I actually found out the other day that App Engine from Google Cloud Platform has been around um, since around like 2009 or 2010. I had no idea that platform was that, that old. Um, but anyway, I digress. All right. 
It's, it's always a good question to ask folks. So let's see. let's create that stage real quick. Okay, so stages, as you guys might know, are really based uh, towards the, the database, and um, and they're kind of aligned with the schema as well. So we can talk about that also. But if I look here at uh, stages, you can see I've got a couple created. So I think what I'm going to do in this one, I, I kept all the objects because I didn't know how um, you know we, we don't really time these meetups right, um, so to speak. And so we're going to walk through all the items uh, and, and build everything step by step so we can see that full process. But I'm going to keep my old items out there. And then the script is shared. You'll, you'll obviously have the, um, uh, the, the correct version. So, so let's look at creating an internal stage, right? So when I, when I click on stage, let me get some real, uh, some more real estate there. I've got four options, technically. I've got one option, which is Snowflake Manage, which is what we're going to do. That's the internal stage. And then I've got the other three, which are based on cloud vendors. So if I click on next, uh, I will create a, a stage name for this. And I'm actually going to copy these other names that are up there. I'm just going to kind of put a, um, a number two next to it. And naming conventions are super important. I, I just want everybody to remember that. You know, whoever watches this later, naming conventions, super important. We have a standard of, of naming conventions we stick to. And it really helps, you know, as you start looking at the metadata, or you're looking to find objects throughout the, the, the databases, it just, it just makes your life so much easier. So uh, if, you're, if you come from a code, like a programming perspective, you know, whatever, um, you know, it's almost like not indenting your code. Uh, you know, it's like blasphemy. So make sure you have some good naming conventions here. Uh, so that's that one. So we're gonna create this. And it's a simple click. Now, as you know, you can always click on show SQL. And this will give you the SQL. Um, that you could you could then run later at a later time just through the worksheet or through some other tool. We always like to do comments as well, just to always stay stay in a good habit. So say meet up internal stage. Okay. And I'll click on finish. All right. So now I've got the number two stage out there. That's how simple that was. I now have a stage that's based on my schema called public, which is basic. And now if I switch back to my worksheets. Uh, the steps that I was just going to go through there are down here. Um, I went up to the ribbon, I clicked on the database, stages tab, uh, got the stage now. So I've, I'm returned here. So I'm all set. Uh, I'm going to jump back up here and just kind of look at security really quickly. Again, it's not um, a, a meetup, the discussions about security. We're going to have one of those eventually. But just using all the basic commands, right? I'm going to use this particular database and warehouse. Uh, I've got this role called the developer role, which is my user, uh, which I'm under. And I'm going to make sure it's got all the proper permissions to, um, to, to select from any tables in that public schema. It can create tables and do all that. So it's super important to do so that we don't bump into any whammies and think something's wrong when there's, when there's nothing really wrong. We just forgot our permissions. And I've got an unstable connection, but hopefully that's not too bad. All right. So I'm going to run this, and you can see the first thing I'm doing is I'm switching to the security admin role. Okay. And then I've got a table over here called year days, and I'm just going to go ahead and run this and use a schema and just make sure it's, uh, it's created. So if I ran it for one here and I just did select all from... And that's empty. Right, so, we've got that. so now the next thing we want to do is we want to set up a external stage. So this is really cool. It works the same way for AWS and, and Azure, Azure as it does for Google Cloud. And the general idea is that we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to go into our cloud vendor. We're going to create a storage bucket because that's all this works, right? It's an object storage bucket. We're going to um, uh, give a name to that storage bucket. Then we're going to come back in here. We're going to create what's called an integration, storage integration. And then we're going to connect, basically connect the two, uh, which will be the next few steps here. Right. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to jump over here to uh, cloud storage. And I've already got one created, but I'm just going to simply create another one for the Yes. Yes. All right. 
So I'm gonna go here. Where do I put my bucket? So that's the bucket I created before, and I'm gonna create another one. I'll call it Snowflake Meetup Test. Oh, let's just call it Snowflake Meetup. Actually, I did say I would call everything test too. So let me just stick with what I said. All right. So I'm in GCP. I'm creating a, a bucket test two. Now, I, I just to simplify this, and you know, so it doesn't like deploy it all over the world and keeps it pretty simple. I'm gonna select just the basic uh, lowest region here, so it's not global. Uh, I'll keep it standard because I will probably I'll delete this after. Then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna do fine grained because it allows me to specify access to individual objects uh, permissions. Ooh, no, I want to do uniform. So it should be all. So we don't want to do individual objects. We want, if we set permissions once, we want it everywhere. All right. Then here, I'm going to use this key. This is a Google Manage key. So there is a, the, the benefit of using external stages uh, as you guys are getting deployed and you know, using Snowflake in a more advanced level. There's the ability to use your own encryption keys and, um, and then also leverage those in Snowflake so that they can communicate. And that just creates like an extra robust, you know, bank level grade security, which means even Snowflake doesn't even necessarily have access to your keys or could, you know, intercept your um, your, your stage um, data, if you will. So, uh, but right now we're gonna use a very generic one here. And then we'll go ahead and create this. This will give me a new bucket, Snowflake Meetup Test 2. I'll go ahead and in advance, I'll go ahead and go to configuration. And I can see here, this is the reference URI, which I'm going to go ahead and copy. And then I'm going to bring that over here. So I'm going to switch my role back to account admin, because like I said before, when we create this storage integration, you have to be an account admin role. So using roles is are very important. Um, we, we've actually found that most people who go into Snowflake um, they mis, um, misalign, mis, uh, misread one of the, the more difficult transitions, uh, which is you don't really need a DBA, a database administrator, although you know, like the skills are kind of similar. But this idea of managing permissions and roles, it's a little bit different even if you know SQL. So uh, I've seen a lot of people kind of get dejected and um, spin their wheels. Uh, not paying attention to the use of roles. So using these scripts and kind of setting the roles at different levels, I think really will really help you um, uh, to, to learn that. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this, which is meetup too. And so this is the basic script, right? So create a replace, storage integration, meetup. Uh, I'm gonna put a two behind this, because like I said, I'm gonna give it twice. And uh, you can see it's an external stage, it's using GCS, Google Cloud Storage, it's enabled, and then the location is this. So let's go ahead and run that. And that succeeds. And then there's a description tag, which is very interesting. So we can always describe an object within Snowflake. And so check this out. This is really interesting. And I think I have a slide on this, but the, the general nuance here is that I've created the integration object. So now Snowflake says, hey, this organization, they want to integrate with a, another cloud vendor. Okay. So the location they're trying to integrate with is here. And it lets us create it. But now when we run description, we get something else here. We get this storage GCP service account field. And it's got this pretty unique name to it, which is kind of, yeah, I'll just say unique. Uh, but we can see it, it's like a service account coming out of the, the system. Same thing for AWS and, and Azure. And so this is basically like Snowflake's personal account that they have. So it can then contact our Google Cloud storage. So it, it would almost be like any of you on the, on the call saying, hey, guys, here is my, um, here, here, here's my, uh, Here's my, my credential, give me access to your storage, right? That, that's private, it's, it's the exact same thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 
Snowflake service account ID. And what we need to do is we need to go over here to our bucket in the permissions. And we're going to add that user. So I'm going to just copy and paste it's that user right there. And then I'm going to give it access. So it just needs the storage object reader, I think it is. Storage object viewer. So, so now I'll save. And look, we could even check the box and send Snowflake a, a, a message that we gave Max. No, we don't need to do that. So I'll just click on save. And uh, we can see that user shows up down here at the bottom. And right here. And so now what I can do is I can now create my stage. So before I just created this integration connection because with what Snowflake needs to know is like, okay, great, you want to create a stage, but how, how am I going to connect to that stage? So it needs an integration connection to store that information. And what's great about this is when you have this integration connection to the storage bucket, uh, you can use it all around. You could create five different stages using this one's um, storage bucket or sorry, this integration, um, the points to a storage bucket. So that's what I'll do right now. I'll call this um, number two. And then I'll use storage integration that I just created above, number two. And it's going to definitely point to this URL. And you might be asking, well, why in the stage are we adding another URL? Then we just put that URL up here. Well, that's true. But because this is now a stage, this is what now has access to whatever is in this prefix. So if I have like 12 subfolders in here in this, this bucket I just created, I could have like 12 folders. Now I could create a storage for, for John and say this is like forward slash John. Or I could create one for Disha and say Disha. And this would be called, you know, stage Disha, whatever. Right, so now I can I can use it many times, not just point there. So that's what's pretty cool about that. You can get five grain or fine grain. So now I'm going to go ahead and create this one. Okay, and so the next thing we're going to do. So now we've got the storage integration. We've got the stage. We're pointing to the right bucket inside of our stage, and now I can list out what's actually in there. So now I can run this. And oh, it's pointing to my old one. So let me back up because there's nothing in this one. Ta da, nothing. All right. So let's get a file over there. So I've got a file sitting around. Let me see. If I'll call it year days, I'm going to just drag and drop that in here. Okay. So I just loaded up the file into the bucket. Yay. Now, hopefully, you know, you're at your company, you've got tens of thousands of files in there. If you're doing some IoT and you've got some sensor data, like we've worked with uh, many, many times uh, with several clients of ours, then you're definitely going to have a lot more uh, data in here. You might have a lot of subfolders. Uh, we see this a lot with a lot of the log and the API um, um, data that we work with with a lot of clients. So lots of data, but we've got one file for now just to get a pointer, right? So now if I do a list and it goes out and maybe it comes back and it tells us, yay, we've got that file, we can see it. So that in and of itself is pretty cool, I always think. Right? Every time I see that, I'm kind of like, yes, that, that is great. Um, because if any of you remember like trying to uh, do like the old Oracle or MySQL like file directory and you have to actually be on the server like from some of the old uh, database systems and if it's not in the data center then it's like connecting to it. The, the fact that you can just do this and like point to a, a, a data set or a set of files whatever they are, I, I'm always still just smiling and grinning um, to see it. All right. So Next thing here, we're gonna again switch our role back. So now I'm switching back to the role of a, just a very generic user, call them business analysts, 
data scientist, right? But not the owner of the Snowflake account. So I'll switch back. And now what I want to do is I want to copy into uh, the year days table. So this is the table that I created before at the beginning. So if you remember at the beginning, we created this little table. We ran this select. We had no records. Now I've loaded this CSV file into our storage. I've connected the storage to Snowflake. Don't beat a dead horse there. And now what I want to do is go ahead and, and copy. So I'm using the copy into. I'm going to copy into that table from the storage bucket. So it's going to know to pick this file up and load it in there. Oh, let me click number two. And let me run this. Doesn't like it. What did I do? Did I not call that the correct name? Meetup storage stage. Oh, so this is a mistake here. I think I need higher level permissions on that one, which I didn't give. So I'm going to switch back to my account admin. Okay. Doesn't like that either. Let's go back up to the top. We'll switch some things around. This is a live demo. Things happen. And we'll see if I can not break it again. Hmm. Very interesting. Let's see. Meetup storage stage. Not authorized. That is peculiar. Try to run some things here. Okay. I actually had this. Uh, oh, no, we we're supposed to make that mistake, right? Yeah, duh. <laughs> I, have, I have the logic here. So we were supposed to bump into the air to say, okay, well, what's the problem there? So we, we were supposed to switch back to the account admin role. As I mentioned before, we we're supposed to grant usage on that particular item to this role, uh, which we did too. And I think that is supposed to be this. Yep, that was it. So sorry about that. I was getting all nervous for, for no reason. We had, we had, and there's another whammy in here I set up also. So, um, so we'll truncate that table. We'll load it up again so we don't have too many duplicate rows. Okay. Now, the one thing that we could do to extend all of that is we could use this thing from Snowflake. It's like a file pattern, a uh, file format, and then there's a pattern set of attributes. And so for example, let's say in this, the storage bucket, let's say I had JSON files, I had text files, I had some other, you know, P6 format file, CSPs and all this sort of thing, Excel files. I can both tell my stage as well as my copy into that I only want specific files to come into that table, whatever I'm copying into from that command. And that's awesome. That gives you that granularity. That gets you closer to something we like uh, in ELT or an ETL tool, um, but still, you know, not. But it's it's definitely handy uh, to work with. And again, just SQL. So that's really awesome. All right. So now I can I should be able to see here that I loaded in uh, X number of records into the into the table. And actually, let me just verify something because I'm trying to recall. Let me, I'm going to run this copy into statement one more time. Yes. Okay. So uh, might as well highlight it when we're talking about stages. So you can see here, I, I ran that twice. And the second time, it processed zero files, zero files. So if I'd done like a insert into, right, from like a standard process, I would, it would have duplicated the files, right? It would have been, I ran it twice, so it would be number of rows times two. But when you use the copy into command, it actually uh, tracks what you actually copied, uh, the or what you copied into the first time. And uh, and that's pretty cool, right? So in, in theory, like high level, right? It's, it's got some tracking mechanism, um, something probably not unlike MD5. 
across all the rows or timestamp or the, or the file itself, I think is actually what it is. And then it won't duplicate it. So you'd have to do something there to change that. Uh, last point I'll make on this and I'll kind of wrap this up just because it's such cool stuff is if I had a bunch of year days files in here, I think I kind of, kind of alluded to this at like year days, one year days, two year days, three, uh, it would seek to pull all those files in again, because I don't have a, um, a file format or a pattern. So it's to pull all the files in. And, and we do that for some other things where we want to have like a smaller file size. So we'll, we'll chop the file size up. So let's say it's a million rows. We'll chop it to, or let's say it's a 10 million row file. We'll chop up the file to a million rows uh, each, load that in, put a suffix of one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way through whatever nine. And then uh, we'll use this copy into process, just call the name and it loads them all in. What on the hell? Okay. Pretty cool. I'm going to mute Keshavon. Keshavon, did you have a question? No. All right. I'll just mute Keshavon real quick. Okay. So next thing next thing up, uh, just to keep us going here. So we did the copy into, uh, let's see, let's see here. All right. So let's take a look at that table. We saw there was like 1,095 records, something like that. Yep. And so now we've got the data. So we only have, what, one, two uh, columns in that table. So let's do something a little different now. We're going to switch gears a little bit. So we see that there's two columns, a little more than 1,000 rows. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new table. And for those of you familiar with like some of the SQL standard, I think like 92, there's a, there's a command called select into, which creates a new table based on another table's uh, select statement big in SQL Server. But uh, here we're going to use create table, table name as select statement. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two columns, right? And this is all just arbitrary test data just to get, you know, get a point across. So I'm going to run this by using command enter. Uh, yep, I already have that one there. So let's just create a different one, number two. All right. And so now what I want to do is let's see what's in this table. So if I run this table, you can see that I've got four columns. So I had the two that came from the CSV file, and I just created two arbitrary columns to make a point here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to use the copy into command, which seems like reverse, but it, you know, it could be one of the original intents. So I'm going to take the data out of Snowflake this time, and I'm going to put it into my GCP storage bucket. So you can see over here, this is the bucket. There's only one file, there's no folders, there's nothing else. And so over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the copy into, um, with the at symbol decorator type thing, I've got my stage. And then this folder here does not even exist. It's not even over here in my storage bucket. So I'm gonna hopefully create that. And then I'm gonna create it from the new table I just created with four columns. So I'm just gonna run that with my command enter. Oh, it bombed. Ha! Ah, but I won't panic this time because I did that on purpose. So we've got failed access from a file, access denied. So this is another one of those kind of like gotchas of having so much power uh, in an in a architecture like this. You have to know your architecture. You have to know the constraints. Otherwise, what you'll do is you'll wind up setting up like full permissions. You'll forget about the whole concept of least, least privilege and your system will be wide open, right? So it's better to kind of hit these whammies, uh, kind of knowing your architecture and knowing just what you need to do to tweak to just give that least permission um, access. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna go over to permissions. I'm gonna find the user from that Snowflake user we talked about, service account. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm just going to add the storage object hmm. creator. Now you could get really granular with your privileges. Uh, as a matter of fact, like I think AWS is actually the best for granularity and, and privileges versus roles. GCP wants you to align with roles and you can create your own roles, but um, you get really granular like right off the bat with S3 or AWS. So we'll just have that high level of privilege there. Well, so now since I did that, let's go back over to the objects. I still don't have any objects here that are folder in nature. And so I'm gonna run this. 
and it should not fail this time. It did not fail. And it tells us it, it unloaded, not loaded, but unloaded. So it knows it's going out um, 10, nine, five rows. And these are the, the egress. So in theory, you know, we're getting charged by the egress bytes. And now if I go here to refresh, I see a new folder got created. And in that folder, I've got a CSV with the gzip compression. On. Um, so what's really cool about this is that Snowflake can actually handle gzip compressed CSV files. So if I want to bring this back in, even though this is like a, it's like a zip file, for those who don't know gzip compression, right? So it's, it's a zip file, uh, just a different compression algorithm. So I can take this file and do a put command into a stage uh, using Snowflake commands if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do that right now. So let's jump back over here and start wrapping up a little bit. All right. So we went to the live demo. Uh, kind of walked you guys through this. I'm just going to highlight a few key points since we, we just saw this. So what do we do uh, for the external interaction here, right? We created uh, the bucket. We, we then created the, um, the, the, we then brought a fold over into the, the bucket, sorry, a file over into the bucket. I was looking at something else, apologies. And, um, and then we made sure we, we got what the folder name was, what the object name was. Um, we talked about the storage integration and, and why it's there and the purpose. But just remember, if you create that storage uh, integration object, you can use it across different stages, which is really cool. Then when you run that describe on your, your storage integration object, then you know there's no passwords passed around here. So that's super cool. There's no passwords. It's just giving Snowflake's account, which they use to you know, work with your data uh, for your selected vendor. Uh, you're just giving that account access to your account. And once you do that, it's a sync, it's a match. And, and, uh, and if you don't want Snowflake to have access to your bucket anymore, for whatever reason, sensitivity, then you just remove their access from the one. You don't, you don't have to go worry about changing passwords and such. Uh, we talked about you know, the, the role, and then we talked about copy into. So you get some great telemetry at, when you use the copy into operation. I'm gonna go outside. So again, uh, copy into put list. These are a lot of these are very basic basic uh, commands. And the beauty of it is ninety percent of what I showed you was just in SQL. So I hope this gave you guys a, a good <laughs> a good uh, understanding of using stages. And that really, again, when you're using stages, it's kind of like what's the real use case? What are you going to use it for? And hopefully this gets you to understand a little bit more about um, not only connecting your, your existing architecture or expanding your architecture, but the fact that you could just use SQL to kind of get some prototyping uh, complete. And last thing I'll leave, leave you guys with um, as we're wrapping up here and getting into some Q&A um, is from the perspective of using just pure SQL to do some of the staging, it's really the foundation for a lot of the other stuff that you want to do in Snowflake. So when you start talking about pipes, so snow pipes, and you start talking about tasks, uh, even maybe even store procedures and functions to some degree, um, you know the the stage of just getting data in and out, landing data from place to place. Uh, what we just walked you through, if you can master that part, uh, it'll it'll be a great foundation for you to build on for all the other Snowflake items. So, I mean, we can open up to some, some Q and A. We've got some, a few minutes here, but I just want to make sure that uh, we invite you all to our amazing, awesome Snowflake meetup group. Uh, anyone can join. Uh, there's no cost. You just have to kind of bring yourself and, and RSVP every now and then. We've got a great list of events coming up, right, Heather? Uh, is there a couple that really stand out to you that are worth mentioning for what's coming up? Yeah, so next month we're going to be talking about variants in Snowflake. Um, and then in August, we're going to be going through tasks in Snowflake. 
Then in September, Snowflake Streams. I mean, there's tons of them, so I won't um, go on too long here, but we'll have descriptions and everything scheduled up and meet up soon. And um, we'll send out uh, reminders for them and that kind of thing. So anybody who's interested in joining, please do so. Cool. Yeah. Looking, looking forward to it. And if you guys have any suggestions, you know, put a note down in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do, is, is this format pretty similar for moving data from uh, SQL Server into Snowflake? Like if I wanted to create a staging area and then do something similar to what you did in GC in Google Query or GCP, I guess. Yeah. Yes, it is. It, it's all very similar. So across those three vendors that we just uh, kind of covered, uh, we, well, we talked about the new way. Uh, yeah, same principle. I mean, if um, if you can get data into one of the buckets, then you know whether that be Azure Blob Storage or GCP Cloud Storage or AWS S3, everything we just walked through applies just the same. So, is there a chance we can get access to your script or your a notebook where you have this code? Yeah, so we'll we'll be releasing the script. Um, we usually take like two days to kind of compile the video. And then um, we put our script out on our GitHub uh, repository. So anybody can go out there and just pull it down. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you'll get an email right there when we post everything. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so um, uh, it's, it's a very good presentation. Can you share this with me? Like, is it possible? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll we'll get the the video. Uh, we'll, I think we put the presentation. I think we just put it in the PDF, or do we share it through Google um, Drive? But yeah, we'll we'll get the the presentation um, ready for everybody to see, and uh, we'll share that out when we send out the email that we've got everything posted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Good question. Good question. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know if there's any other questions, but again, if you guys have any questions, you guys can always reach us. You can reach us on social media, um, ping us in the forums and um, bring a friend uh, or colleague to the next meetup. Thank you for this great presentation. Thank you guys for attending. Okay, we'll wrap up there and uh, look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Heather. Bye for now.